but it was so much fun. We had 15 queer contestants and some of them knew each other, some of them didn't. And I like met with them and I was like, okay, you're gonna steal the rose or you're gonna cause drama and you're gonna, you know, drink way too much and like, you know, all these things. And no one knew who was playing who. And so it was a really awesome shoot because everyone just kind of went in going kind of like The Bachelor of like, hi, nice to meet you. And drama's about to ensue or the, the chaos that I call chaos is about to ensue. I love that. And it was just, it was the most dramatic season so far. Yes, it was the most dramatic season thus far. <laughs> And you mentioned Girls Like Girls and it being Pride Month. I know that that song has just taken on a life of its own. So did you expect that when you originally released that music video or wrote that song? No, I mean, when I wrote that song, it was raining in LA, which it never rains. And um, I was sitting with my co-writer, Lily, my producer, Owen. And, um, you know, she was like, what is something that you're scared of? talking about or expressing and I had never come out to, to someone in the industry before and so I shared that with her and and that's where Girls Like Girls was born we wrote that song in a couple of hours as well and um yeah I had no idea that that was going to I don't know just inspire me and also help me find a community that I love so dearly and uh yeah I had no idea it was going to take the life that it has. And was there like a sense of vulnerability that came with writing that song? I mean, when she asked, like, what is your. Biggest... Yeah. Yeah. No one wants, no one yeah. wants to be asked that question. What's your biggest fear? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are you too afraid to share, but will share with me now? And you're like, no, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I feel like some of the, the greatest songs come from from fear and vulnerability and I feel like when I write music and I especially work on the album like Panorama it's like if I don't feel a little uncomfortable then maybe it's not the one you know and um it's important to kind of push yourself of like okay what else am I trying to learn about myself or uncover about myself and um that's what's so amazing about songwriting is that it's a dialogue within yourself and then you're able to share that dialogue with others that help inspire others to either have a dialogue with themselves or feel more um, comfortable with who they are and, and what they're, you know, navigating. Like, girls, I don't know when I'll change that. But it's always like such an amazing moment going on in this world. And that's why music is, is such a powerful tool and um, just support system for so many of us. Is there a specific song off the album other than For the Girls and Deep in the Woods that you're excited for fans? To uh, well, I've announced the track list, you guys. If you haven't checked out the track list, I'm about to. I was about to say, oh, I can't tell you, but now I can because yeah, I was like public information. <laughs> the little video of it. It's so hard. Like you keep these secrets and then you share it and you're like, oh, wait, it's it's not mine anymore. It's everyone's um, underground. Is really, every song that made it on the album is is a favorite, which is, I feel like, a good place to be. You know, when you're releasing an album, you would, one would hope. Yeah. How would you describe this album? Um, this album is a more refined version of myself. I feel like I've had a lot of clarity, um, you know, during expectations, obviously I was sharing my authentic truth, but also catching up with my past. And I feel like Panorama, I've really catched up with my present self. And I feel like there's a lot of clarity in my life of who I am. And um, you can feel that clarity within the album and the record itself. I kind of went through like a spring cleaning in my personal life, dealing with a lot of health issues and learning how to take care of myself. And then also with the music, it was like, okay, how do I, you know, it's kind of doing spring cleaning of like what needs to be here and what doesn't need to be here. And within that, I found a very refined version of 
of my voice and my sound. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear it. Deep in the Woods is just the beginning. For the Girls is just the beginning. Found My Friends is just the beginning. Like, there's so many amazing songs that, I don't know, just make me feel free and um, give me joy and with everyone. Are there songs? Oh, wait. You broke up, Jess. Sorry. <laughs> Why does it do it every time you, you ask me a question? It's rude. Not it's just not liking my voice right now. Okay, I can hear you um, right now. Wait, ask me again. Is there songs that didn't make the list that you, like, were trying to fit in there, but they just didn't make the cut? Yeah, I mean, I think and every artist and songwriter, like, has a personal connection to every song that they write. And there was a lot of songs that I love that um, just weren't as great as the ones I have now. But they're also amazing songs and... I hope to find a home for them eventually. You know, a lot of artists, there's you write like hundreds of songs and you release 13, 11, 12, you know. Um, but they're all your babies because they all are time capsules of moments in your life. Um, you know, they're like little journals. Yeah. Is there someone in your life that you trust their opinion to like help make those calls? Yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of friends. I have one friend. Her name's Gabby, and we w went to high school together. And we used to do like open mic nights together and like talent shows because she sang as well at the time. And um, like I remember in high school, I'd like write a song and like sing it to her and be like, "What do you think?" You know, like that kind of friendship. And um, so I, she's always on my list of of sharing the music to you know her first and seeing which song she thinks you know, might be the one. Did she have a album? Sorry? Does she have a off the album? Um, she does. I know Deep in the Woods is one of them. I have to look back at our text, but I know she has a lot of favorites, for sure. And which one are you excited to perform live? Great question. I'm excited to perform Panorama live. I'm excited to perform um, Sugar at the Bottom live. I mean, all of them. I'm just, it's so exciting. You know, I'm going on tour with Loud in August, and I'm going to be able to play a couple of the new songs from the, the album, and then obviously, hopefully, I'll go on a headlining tour soon and, and get to play all of them. And just, you know, it's so exciting as an artist to finally get to, like, perform them live and, and sing, sing with your friends, you know. Have you thought about, I mean, is it August? Oh, wait, you broke up again, Jess, one more time. Sorry. August is fast approaching, which is yeah. when the tour starts, and we're already almost in July. So have you thought about what you want the live music to sound and differ from the album sound? I mean, I just want it to sound exactly like the album because I love the album so much. You guys, I also just realized today is the one – is we're exactly one month away from Panorama being released July 29th. So just yay to us. This is an exciting day and moment right here. Yes. And what are the emotions like day before release, if, whether it's a single or a whole blown album or a music video, what are your feelings? Like when? I think it's like different for every song and every release. I think with an album, there's a lot of like, I saw someone talking about it on TikTok where it's just kind of like um, there's a lot of like grief in a weird way because you're almost like like letting go of something and like saying goodbye because it was yours for so long and then it becomes someone else's. But I also just get I'm just really excited that, you know, I've had this album for a while and I love this music so much and I'm just excited to share it at this point. I'm just going to start releasing things left, right and center. And it has been a hot minute since we got a full blown. It has been a hot minute. It definitely has, but I had to make it right. You know, it's like you you want to, you know, set a bar for yourself and have the album be just as good, if not better, than your first album. And as my sophomore album, I think we made that happen. <laughs> it, you know, took 
you know, great things take time. It's not like some, sometimes things come easy and sometimes things take work and also just like life and living and um, experimenting. So yeah. how do you know when a song is ready to be like you're done with my self approval on? That's a great question. I think for me, it's like when the song makes me feel the way I want to feel. So like if the song evokes a certain emotion, whether I'm wanting to feel nostalgic or if I'm wanting to like comfort my sadness or if I'm wanting to feel like I want to just go dance on the street. Um, it's really just like a feeling. And like a lot of times you'll write a song and it'll be like something's off. So it's not ready. And like you just have like that feeling of like, oh, maybe I need to rewrite this part or maybe I need to add a, a, another bridge or, you know, whatever it is. It's just like you just know it's like there's something off or this is it. This is it. And is there a song that you're most proud of so far? Uh, like in life or on the album? In life. Well, that's a hard question. <laughs> I'm very proud of all of my songs because, you know, each song takes so many people and time to, to make it happen and to complete it. Um, I don't know if I can answer that question. I feel like... I'm very proud of all my songs and mm. uh, they all have a special place in my heart, um, different times of my life. And um, yeah, some songs like capture ease and sometimes songs capture hardships and sometimes some, you know, like they just yeah. all have like memories within themselves. And when you look back at specific songs that you wrote during a specific time in your life, are you taken back to that moment? Definitely, yeah, definitely. And would you say that that is also like a factor into the song being complete is when it encapsulates all of the emotions that you were going through while writing it? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a fair statement to make. What would you say is your biggest inspiration when it comes to writing songs? Um, probably asking myself like, are you being truthful? <laughs> Are you still hiding something or is this actually how you feel? Like kind of like asking yourself questions and questions within the questions, um, trying to dive deeper. Cause I think as humans, you know, as people, we grew up with a lot of trauma and we also grew up with a lot of things we're trying to unlearn. And so there's a lot of like walls that you're trying to like move and get rid of or like push away or, temporarily push away um so that's always a process and how has songwriting grown over the last four years uh, my songwriting has grown a lot i was saying the other day how you know panorama there was a lot of like spring cleaning i also too had this realization that there were also some hidden walls that I didn't know were still there. Um, you know, growing up writing music and being closeted, um, you know, writing songs on my guitar on my bed, I would uh, put up walls or like use he, he, him pronouns and like all these things because I didn't want people to find my lyrics or I didn't want people to really know how I felt. And I think that over time I've obviously become, I've stepped into my authentic self and I've shared that but I think during this album, I also noticed there were still some some walls that were lingering that I was like, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should, you know, move those yeah. away as well so I can be clearer with my intent and what I'm trying to say with, with, with my music. When it comes to performing that. Sorry, Jess, try one more time. Why does it do that? <laughs> No idea. <laughs> we just want to just want to hear you speak more. I was like, it's not cutting out on my end, but I don't know. It's on my end. Okay, okay, I can hear you now. So go. I like a cell phone commercial. Um, <laughs> like, can you hear me now? When you're performing these songs live and you are vulnerable and you are your true authentic self, mm -hmm. how, like, and 
shift into a live performance? Are you vulnerable? Are you like, what emotions are you, are you excited? Or are you kind of like hesitant or is it, oh, I put my 100% authentic self in this album. So I have to do the same when I'm in front of thousands and thousands of people. I'm a very uh, emotional, I'm a very sensitive person. And so even like songs like gravel to tempo like i get i have to fight through tears singing that song like i get very emotional um because i think that like as a songwriter you've overcome so much to to get to that point to be able to perform that song and i get emotional a lot when i when i perform and i sometimes have to be very cold with myself and be like do not cry <laughs> like because then you will not sound good. Um, but I get choked up all the time. And I'm sure that's like, I think it's similar to other artists. I don't know. Or maybe I just like, I'm a very emotional person. And do you see the reaction to you from the crowd? And does that also influence your emotions? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's amazing to feel energy in, in a room and that adrenaline and, um, I remember doing a show like after the pandemic and I was just like blown away by this like wall of adrenaline and my body was shaking because I hadn't felt that in so long. My body was like, what is going on? And it's a pretty magical feeling to, to have so much joy and energy in one room and have that all be shared um, together. What do you hope that thing? Wait, ask me one more time, Jess, sorry. What do you hope that fans and listeners get out of this album once it's released? I hope my fans love the album. I hope they um, find the comfort and support that they need uh, with whatever they're navigating. And I hope they feel seen and understood and celebrated. Uh, yeah, just validated. And lastly, wrap it up the Songers Camp. We're asking everybody, what is your song of the summer? Song of the summer. There's so many good, everyone just released so much music last week. I've like been catching up listening to everyone's albums. Um, sheesh. Well, generally speaking, I love Muna. And they just released their album. Um, I love Conan Gray. I love that song, Movies, on his album. So that could be a song. I personally, Selfishly for the Girls by Haley Kyoko is, is a summer bop. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, I hope we can just find some comfort with music because I know a lot of people are feeling very scared and vulnerable right now. And so I just, uh, yeah, just try to utilize music to help support yourself with whatever you're going through. And hopefully it can, you can find many summer bops, you know, the summer's just getting started. So. Yeah, exactly. It has a month to look forward to the new album. And after there will be countless summer one bops. Month, one month, 30 ish days away. It's crazy. So to wrap it up, would you have anything you'd in the last uh, um, I love you all so much. Thank you for your comments. I've been, I've been scrolling through and seeing your love and support. And um, yeah, I love you guys so much. I'm sending you big hugs. And so excited for you to hear the album in a month. Thank you for your love on Deep in the Woods and for the girls. And thanks, Jess, for having me. This was a really, really cool combo. Of course. Thank you so much for wrapping up the month of June. Yay. I love it. Love you all. It was great talking to you, Haley. Great talking to you too, Jess. Bye.